So in this table, I want to go through how the EA and the MCAE compare to each other. So this is a, a long overview. Um, we go through it one by one and we have two main topics that we want to cover here. So the offer availability, so what's available within the MCAE versus uh, the EA and the program details. So what is, is possible and what isn't possible. Right off the bat, seed-based online services are available in the MCAE as of now. M365, O365, D365 and Power Platform as you are used to in the EA are also available in the MCAE. Then the subscription term length. Um, the EA always used to be three-year term unless Microsoft um, had you sign up to a five-year deal for instance or you negotiated a shorter deal uh, to align to something th that was always custom. Basically three years and then you renew or you make some other decisions. Within the MCAE, you have the option to decide what you want. So you could have certain subscriptions go on a monthly basis at a higher price, but you could also lock in for a year against a lower price point. And some offers even go for a three year term. So you have the option to be a bit more flexible in how you want to procure. So you can say, okay, for 95% of my organization, I'm going to lock in the prices for a year because I know that I'm going to be using those for the entirety of that year. And I have no fluctuation in that part of my organization. And then for that 5%, you could say, I want monthly invoices for this because I want to be able to reduce those as I go along. And the percentages obviously can differ to whatever works for you. That way you can build in more easily that fluctuation and the flexibility that you require. For Azure services, uh, existing customers and payers go only for the EA at the moment. That's what Microsoft says, but you can still get Azure in your EA. In indirect markets, it's still the go-to build uh, build it in the uh, enterprise agreement but also in markets where microsoft contracts directly the enterprise agreement you can still do this the mcae they state that there are no limitations so you can purchase azure you can have a committed offer get some discounts associated to it and just go along from sa in the ea that is still available in the mcae that's not that's not possible so if you migrate from an ea to an mcae you have from sa licenses you want to make sure that you get compensated for maybe having to step away from that from sa license there's been a massive change in the from sa versus how this was prior to february 2024 like we just announced a big change here if that's of interest to you and you're watching this video check the link you might want to read the blog that we did on this perpetual slash on-premise licenses are at the moment not available in the mca e yet obviously this will be included but it takes microsoft a longer period of time to include it if you still buy perpetual on-premise licenses for instance for windows server sql server you should stick to the ea or use a different contractual vehicle like the mpsa or uh, investigate if you still need software assurance for your licenses and otherwise not license them at all you have different options here an sce server and cloud enrollment would still be available for any of the server products uh, to add these uh, on-premise licenses to your contract now if we go into the program details what we see here is um, the markets the mcae is not available in all markets so certain markets only it is available for instance in the netherlands most of the western european countries the us canada australia and there's a list of uh, countries where this is available now in many countries this is not yet available whereas the enterprise agreement is available in our markets for commercial and public sector customers the contract stack for the enterprise agreement, this is still very big. MBSA agreement, enrollment, amendments, customer price sheet, product selection form, you name it, all needed. And the MCAE, it's just the Microsoft customer agreement terms and potentially any supplemental terms because when you sign up to the MCAE, you don't have to immediately start buying anything. 
it's when you start buying products that additional terms will be added if required by those products. The amendments that are available, yes, they're both available, but the enterprise agreement is still the contract where you are able to get custom terms. In the MCAE, it's mainly standardized amendments that we've seen so far. So there's not a lot of customization potential there yet. So if you're a very big organization, you rely heavily on customized terms because you have flexible contract period and you have the option to scale up and down on a longer or a shorter basis than one year. That's all stuff that's custom, for instance, to name some examples. And then that doesn't fit here. The commitment minimums for the MCAE, there is no commitment minimums. You can sign up as uh, little as one license, as far as I know. Um, for the EA, the minimum is still 500 licenses, and it requires that enterprise-wide commitment um, based on the products that you're buying. For instance, uh, if you're buying solely M365 suites, the minimum is 500. You don't necessarily have to do that enterprise-wide. Agreement term for the MCAE is evergreen and for um, the enterprise agreement it's just three years. One of the main things that's going to change from, from the program details that is very interesting to the partner channel of Microsoft is the LSP involvement. In an enterprise agreement you're used to having an LSP involved so they do the fulfillment of the, of the contract and they had help with uh, placing the orders, etc., etc. In the MCAE, you don't require an LSP. It's optional, apparently. So you can still use an LSP for your order handling, but basically the MCAE should be set up in such a way that you get to do this all yourself. On the annual process, so true ups, annual orders, reservation reconciliations, if you've been working with the enterprise agreement, you're very used to it. In the MCAE, this, these things are not available or required. You manage your subscriptions individually, but what you do need to take care of is any renewal. So if you sign up for a one year term, for instance, within that one year, after that one year, you want to renew those licenses. You need to be aware that there is a contractual event happening there. But the renew option is always available, but you want to make sure that you discuss your options with Microsoft. For instance, discounts or prices, uh, price adjustments that might have happened up down. You want to see those reflected um, in that sense. For price protection, so the one of the main things for the enterprise agreement was always the three-year price protection, and that counted for all products. So you signed for your customer price sheet, which held uh, holds the, the products that you want to buy, and the prices associated to this, and those prices were stuck into your contract and locked in for the term of three years. Especially for Azure, this was also very important because Azure had a threshold. So when you signed your Azure contract in the EA, this meant, means that um, the prices of those uh, Azure services cannot be higher throughout that three-year term, but they can go lower. So that was always a nice thing because for three years, you didn't have to worry about any Azure price uplifts. Uh, and you could benefit from any, any pricing decrease that happened. But upon your renewal, then you would obviously be faced with any pricing uplifts. In the MCAE, there is no price protection for Azure. So any uh, move that Microsoft makes to the price list up or down, you get to um, reap the rewards of so either your screwed or you get a lower price it's just the way that it happens especially with the latest thing that microsoft has been doing every six months where they would increase prices based on currency exchange issues opposed to the us dollar that can be very difficult to handle um, because yeah you just basically have to eat it those changes for the user subscription licenses or seed-based uh, products, um, you can lock those in for a term. Throughout that term, they will be set, and then you would be good for that period of time up until the renewal of that term. Even for monthly subscriptions, you would be able to lock those prices in for a term, um, and you would be able to um, add 
licenses against that price point for a period of time. Coterminous subscriptions, these are automatically incorporated in the enterprise agreement. So if you were to order additional licenses for, for instance, cloud subscriptions in your enterprise agreement, it would always be aligned to the next anniversary date of your contract in MCAE. This is optional, but I would highly recommend you do this. So you can just buy new subscriptions for M365 E3, have those run for a year uh, from the date of ordering. But you could also say, well, I already bought M365 E3 and I want to align the end date of these additional licenses to the same period. That makes it easier for you to do your uh, own uh, IT asset management as well. Currencies. So in the EA, um, many different countries had their own price list. So you had Euro price list, uh, Swiss franc, all the Scandinavian countries, US dollar, you name it. There was a price list for it. In the MCAE, this changes to a local currency per customer location, but they use the US dollar prices as the basis for it and set a exchange rate looking back to the start of the month upon your billing period. And more on this in the video that we link. Payment can be done in the enterprise agreement annual or upfront. Upfront was usually not an option that was chosen, but for, for instance, TrueUps, it was mandatory to do it in such way, especially for on-premise software and services. In the MCA, it depends on the type of su subscriptions and the term that you chose. So you can do monthly payments, you can do annual payments, or you could do upfront payments, even in the three-year subscription term. So it's up to you on how you want to set this up. And finally, big issue for a lot of organizations in the enterprise agreement was the how Microsoft handled the multi-tenants, so multiple tenants under one agreement. It was a very difficult way to set up. You had to have these, you have to set up these billing enrollments, then link the tenants to the billing enrollments, and get a different invoice for that tenant, but still sent to the, the entity holding the contract. In MCAE, this is all self-service. So you can decide yourself if you want to add certain tenants or not, uh, or you want to set up a different Microsoft customer agreement. Though there's really no need to because with the invoicing, the way they set it up, you easily get the switch uh, or set up the, the billing profiles as well.